let's go back to the kind of the epigenetic clock situation. Yeah. So yeah. do you think that there could be value in this as a tool, right? And, and, and let me hold the bar as high as I think it would need to be to justify their use. So right now we have this thing called chronologic age. Um, I can look at your birth certificate. I can know how old you are. And based on that, I can make an estimate of how much longer you will live. Mm -hmm. So if I look at a person who's 40 years old and I know nothing else about them, and then I see another person who is 65 years old and I know nothing else about them, I can say with a high degree of confidence that the 65 year old person will live, you know, I'm making this up because I'm not an actuary, but somewhere between 20 and 30 more years. Yeah. And the 40 year old person, I can say with a pretty high degree of confidence will live, you know, whatever, somewhere between, uh, call it, you know, 30 to 50 more years or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, now to me, that's a pretty good test, mm -hmm. right? I know, I know, I know, I know a knowable measurable thing about them. Um, it's measurable by knowing their birth date, right? Um, and it predicts future life. Mm -hmm. So. Do you think biologic clocks will ever serve a purpose like that, where I could um, take two 50-year-olds and one of them has a biologic age of 40 and one of them has a biologic age of 60, according to the clock, and that those numbers will actually be better at predicting future life than their chronologic age of 50? Or do you put yourself in the camp that says, no, Peter, that's a ridiculous standard that no biologic clock could ever come to, but it might tell me about their health. It might be yet another biomarker that says, hey, the guy at 40 is just healthier than the guy at 60. And somehow, by the way, it's picking that signal out of a data field that I can't pick out anywhere else because yeah. they otherwise look identical. We measured this recently because uh, we... Uh, uh, collaborators of mine at NUS, uh, uh, Jan Gruber and Feng Sheng, uh, and I had this small role in this project. Um, they decided, Feng Sheng is a, a geriatrician. He sees people all the time uh, frustrated. You know, what can, the geriatricians have limited things they can do. They're seeing people that are, already have multimorbidity. And, mm -hmm. uh, and he, you know, the clocks are not that useful. And so he wanted to like, how do we create a reliable clock that a doctor can understand? And so we- For what purpose? For um, biologic age. I'll, I'll tell you what I think the purpose is for it in a minute. Okay. Um, and this build, a, so they're first generation and second generation clocks. The first generation clocks try to predict your chronologic age and the second ones predict some outcome. So the question is, we want to predict mortality. We don't want to predict your chronologic age. Yep. So intrinsically, if it works, it's going to do better than the than chronologic age for the second generation clocks. Um, so we took in Haynes, you yeah. know, data collected around 1999, 2000 mortality data for 200 months, uh, and we just and and these parameters are nice and because you can actually do a consumer test of HbA1c. You know, yep. there are many labs that do that. It's reproducible to a large extent, much better than DNA methylation. And doctors use all these parameters. So uh, the things that are in Enhance, like LDL, you know, all the things in your book, inflammatory markers, you know, uh, medical tests, uh, you know, some self, some cognitive self-reported stuff. So we just took everything as a feature and used AI, uh, linear model, to try to predict mortality. Um, and uh, they're on we're on the second generation of this clock now. Uh, and it predicts mortality better than any other parameter in NHANES. It's way better than ASCVD, uh, the cardiovascular disease measurement. Um, and so recently the methylation data came out on NHANES. And so we could go back and compare the mortality prediction for methylation clocks. Some of the first generation clocks are worse than chronologic age. Your passport is better than they are at predicting mortality which to me means that they're not useful because you know even if they're not designed to predict mortality if they don't capture some element of that what are they measuring you know the second generation clocks like grim age and pheno age they do better job than chronologic age for sure at predicting mortality predicting mortality yeah and just to be clear we've captured that out of the enhanes database that's from enhanes that's the only thing we've looked at right now okay let me make sure i understand that by def you had 200 months yeah. Of forward-looking data. Yeah. 
so anyway, you've got um, uh, 18 years of data and um, you're saying we, if we know the methylation of somebody at that time in the cohort, 1999 yeah. to yeah. 2000, um, we could predict their date of death better than the actuarial data of their age. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't aware of that. Well, it's just, it, I'm not, I don't think it's even, it's been accepted for publication. Okay. I'm okay. not even sure it's online yet. So. Okay. Um, um, it's not your fault. That's very interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That, but, uh, that, so that basically answers a question that I've never seen answered. Yeah. But our clinical chemistry clock does better than that, those. Okay. And, then, and what is included in that clinical clock? And what, there are about 50 parameters that we measure now, but C, c complete blood count gives you about 30 of those parameters. So it's not as elaborate as you think it would yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I believe um, it. And then, you know, it's a lot of standard markers that you already so measure. So you then, probably measure all yeah, of so them that, in your I guess patient. that was going to be my question yeah. is... It's about $300 in Singapore if you did it all de novo, but anybody going to a doctor's office has most of those parameters measured anyway. And if they're going to, you know, a wellness longevity center, all of them are probably Of course. Measured. Yeah. And so yeah. The, the, the question I suppose is this, if you're MetLife, mm -hmm. you already, like you are better at predicting mortality than anybody on the planet. Yeah. I, and I don't know if it's MetLife, by the way, but it, like pick the best life insurance company. Yeah. Like this is their business. Yeah, they're so good at predicting mortality. Yeah. It's frightening, yeah. and so yeah, I, I I don't know how they're doing that, so I can't comment. Well, and directly. nobody does, right? Yeah. But my point is, they're <laughs> yeah. looking at age. Yeah, they're looking at a whole bunch of things in your medical yeah. history. Yeah, they're looking at a whole bunch of blood tests, yeah. your blood pressure, your weight, yeah. your waist, your circumference, all those things, and they're coming up with an exceptional yeah. prediction yeah. of remaining years on life. The real question is, do you believe that they will incorporate a second generation uh, epigenetic well, clock, or do you believe that they've already got that captured in their data set? They may, I don't know. It's an unanswerable question. I, but again, I, I, we're focusing on the clinical chemistry anyway. We're not doing any methylation. Yep. So, um, and what we're finding is hospitals want to use this now. The the clinical chemistry or methylation? The clinical chemistry. But, and I, I think it's because it resonates. You know, when you, when you show them the list of parameters, Yep. A doctor doesn't have to be an expert in epigenetics to, to figure out what's going on. And the other thing is they're all actionable. So we have principal components that we can break it down in, and we can see smoking in one component, and we can see met metabolic disease in another one, and obesity in another one. And we find cases, We find, so a few conclusions from this are really interesting. One is we find cases where nothing's out of the reference range, okay? So a doctor that's looking at things, especially if they have a few minutes to look at, they're not going to prescribe anything for this person. Yeah. But these four parameters in this principal component are increasing, you know, their their biologic age by four years, which means it's increasing their, uh, it's 50% increase in mortality risk. So that's, they, these are actionable things. You know, you can treat LDL, you can treat high blood pressure, you can treat these markers, right? And so clinicians are actually willing to then be a little bit more aggressive and try to prescribe something or lifestyle modification or yep. something to treat these markers. So, so yeah, it's just actionable. To, so yeah, exactly. That that makes sense. The reason that yeah. you prefer this is it it doesn't just give you an answer, it gives you a solution. If we if we just took a population of yeah. middle-aged yeah. healthy individuals yeah. Yeah. and we des we could design an experiment where yeah. You had the placebo arm, yeah. the metformin arm, the rapamycin arm, the yeah. SGLT2 inhibitor arm, and the GLP-1 agonist arm. What is your prediction in length of life or additional years of life given in that uh, six-arm study or whatever it is? I'm Peter Atia. This podcast relies exclusively on premium subscribers for support, which allows us to provide all our content without taking a single penny from advertisers. I believe this keeps my content honest, making it a trusted resource for listeners like you. As a premium member, you'll get immediate access to our entire back catalog of AMA episodes and all future AMA episodes. You'll get longevity-focused premium articles packed with actionable insights, You'll get unrivaled show notes for each and every episode of The Drive, every topic, every study, every resource from each episode carefully curated for you. You'll get quarterly podcast summaries where you'll learn my biggest personal takeaways from the previous 90 days of expert guest episodes and much more. This journey doesn't have to be navigated alone. We can take these steps towards a better, longer life together. 
Become a premium member today at peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe to join me in a shared commitment to a healthier future. Thank you.